from Kango Wildlife Branch, all the way in Oteren. At this stage, unfortunately, we are still closed for the public, but that doesn't mean that we can't bring the animals to you, especially, especially to the people we miss the most, our tiny tots. This stream goes out specifically for you guys, all the kids who have been stuck at home, who've been missing the animals. We hope you get to enjoy this live feed and learn loads more about these phenomenal little animals. We're just waiting for Delana to join us. Look at that, having a good munch. Look at their beautiful home. All right, the Lono is ready for us. Are you ready for us? Yes, I am. Hi, guys. Hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for joining us again here at Kanga Wildlife Ranch for this next live stream that we're doing. So yeah, I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about our meerkats. Um, the group that we got here is four boys. All right, so we're looking at Bam Bam, Dusk, River, and Willow. Those are their names. All right, so they're currently having a little snack, um, foraging around looking for insects. Um, so we've got some mealworms in here for them that they are currently looking for. So these guys. Um, throughout the day, they will continuously be digging, foraging, looking for food um, in their home areas. Okay, so the, our ages here vary also quite a lot. Um, our oldest one is Bam Bam, and he's about eight years old now, and then us others are between two years of age and six years of age. All right, so River and Willow are actually Bam Bam's um, offspring. And then Dusky joined us a few years ago. He was actually somebody's pet, just like Bam Bam, who was also somebody's pet. Now, these guys are unfortunately very common in the pet trade in South Africa. Um, but unfortunately, they don't always make great pets. Um, they are very smelly. These guys like to mark everything with an anal gland and that doesn't smell very good at all all right as well as they are very social animals so they do need to be in groups now the biggest that their groups can be is around 50 individuals it's five zero okay so that's quite a lot your average group size is around 20 to 30 but it can be as little as two but they are very social um the dynamics social dynamics is quite strong as well um, and usually your leader of the group will be a female, all right? So your female is your head mama of the group. She's in charge and she controls all the others in the group, okay? And the female, the dominant female, is also the only one, the only female that will breed in the group. And she'll be the only female that will have babies in the group as well. So you can see two there on Sentry Duty. Now what these guys are doing, they are looking out for predators, all right? Birds of prey in the wild, they'll be looking for jackals as well, all right? So eagles, hawks, jackals, animals like that. And if they do see a predator, they'll give off a very high-pitched bark, and then all the others will run into the, into the dens, all right? So they've got a very complicated system of tunnels and rooms, underground that has its own microclimate and these guys will if they feel threatened by anything they'll dart into those tunnels and rooms and seek safety there all right so you'll see the mound in the middle it's got some tunnels and some entrances in it and that's where their night house is and that's their safe zone so if they do feel threatened then they'll run into there all right so you'll also, also see around their eyes, it's very black. The fur around their eyes is very black, the dark, and that helps 
to prevent too much glare in their eyes, like sunglasses when they are looking out for predators. All right. So you see they like to dig and they are fish specifically designed for digging. They're very good diggers. So their front feet have got very long claws which help them with the digging. And then also their ears. They can shut their ears when they are digging in the dirt and in these tunnels to prevent the sand from going into their ears. All right. So like I was saying as well, these guys are not good pets because they also bite all right they've got very strong biting power um, in the wild these guys will eat things like scorpions even snakes they'll kill and eat snakes such as cobras and puff adders and to be able to do that you need some serious weapons and that's their teeth and their biting power all right so if one of these guys do bite you you are going to know about it and sometimes it can even cause that you would need stitches all right so interesting about, thing about them as well is that they are also immune to certain scorpion venoms. All right. Other things that they'll eat in the wild is mainly insects, um, some lizards, smaller birds, eggs, um, some smaller rodents as well. Also some um, veg vegetation such as roots. So what we feed them is quite a mixture of stuff. We feed them um, some vegetables, a little bit of fruit as well as some mints, um, as well as every now and then we give them the insects um, to provide them with the foraging stimulation that they need, like the ones that are digging over there. All right. Okay. So the average weight, they weigh around 600 to just under one kilogram. So not very big. And lengthwise, you can say about 30 centimeters. All right. About the size of a ruler. That's how big these guys get. And they belong to the mongoose family. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, Nicole. Hello, Anina. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for everyone watching. You guys are welcome to leave us a message if you want to. Please also remember to subscribe to our channel to see all of our live feeds. If you do have a question for Delano, Please be sure to type it for us in the message section and we will answer you. Alright, so everybody knows these guys as meerkats, but they are also called surikats, which is the other name. Alright, now the tail, the tail is used for balancing when they are standing upright, when they are on sentry duty. So this little one here is Bam Bam. <laughs> Bam Bam has been with us the longest. All right, pretty much almost his entire life he's been with us. Like I said before, he was a pet and then came to us and joined us. So that one over there sitting in the sun. And then we've got one right on top, on the very top of the mound. Wow. And look at GT, sentry GT over there as well. So Delano, <laughs> yes. what would he do if he saw something that he was scared of now? Okay, so if he was now saw a eagle or a hawk or a jackal or something that he felt threatened by, he would give off a very loud bark and then run down the tunnel, the mound, and then straight into the tunnels. They're also known as dart holes or dart tunnels, and they'll go in there where it is safe, and they'll stay there until they feel that it is until they feel that it is quite um, safe for them to come out and they'll stick their heads out see if there's any danger around and then come out again so they do have a good sense of smell but their eyesight is their best best sense thank you for asking mark <laughs> all right now these guys if they do have um, out in the wild if they are babies in the group and they actually have babysitters all right which will stay in the dens with the babies the whole day and they will actually not eat for the whole day while they stay in the den with the babies and protecting them uh, not only from predators but other meerkat gangs or mobs so that's what you call a group of meerkat a gang or a mob so they'll protect them if there's other meerkats that come that are likely to challenge the group and then will kill the babies so those babysitters protect them and they rotate the babysitters throughout the day uh, every day 
So pretty much on the, every other day, there'll be a different babysitter looking after the little ones in the dens during the day. And then at night, these guys will stay in the dens. They don't come out at night. They come out when the sun comes up and they go back into the den when the sun goes down. <laughs> Some playful behavior there. <laughs> Delano, would they swim? No, these guys are not really swimmers. Um, so we've got a little pool in here for them. It's just mainly for drinking water. Um, these guys you mainly find in the desert and more arid regions. You won't really find them around massive bodies of water. So these guys are not really swimmers. Delano, I've heard that they are amazing travelers and that they've got houses everywhere that they like to go on holiday for. Is that true? Um, they do have a quite a wide um, home range area that they will live in where they are foraging for food. And then they will have their little tunnel systems throughout that area so that if they do see danger, they can shoot into these tunnels. So pretty much... Um, the tunnels are there for safety and their homes are there for safety. So wherever they are, there will be little tunnels that are there where they can dart into for safety. If they get trapped and they can't get into a tunnel, they basically will form up into the group. Um, safety in numbers. And what happens is then they will make themselves look bigger, arch their backs, push their hair up, um, be very vocal, making loud hissing noises, tails straight up in the air and warning the predators, showing their teeth, showing those dangerous weapons of theirs to the predators that are threatening them. So yeah, and then pretty much if they do have to latch on, obviously they can do some damage if they really have to with those teeth as well. So Delano, mm. we don't have anyone visiting them at this stage of lockdown. Yes, that's right. What impact do you think that has on them and their health care? Well, it's pretty clear that with quite a lot of our animals, these guys do miss the attention that they receive from the public. Um, so with us that are here, that are still working at the ranch, that are still caring for them every day, we have to put in that extra, extra effort to give them with, provide them with more stimulation mentally and physically. <laughs> um, and then just to keep their minds and their bodies active. So giving them different enrichment, giving them different things to, to focus on, to do, and to be active as well. Oh, wow. So, Thank you, Ankya, for watching. Yeah, Thank you, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Louisa. Louisa. <laughs> Nicole's asking, what do they or we do about fleas or mites that they, they might get from the sand? All right, so we're quite lucky that these guys... Um, don't really have that problem here at the ranch with the fleas or mites so um, we don't provide them with any parasite control at this stage um, they do groom each other a lot as well and with it being the sandy and dusty a lot of animals will use and do sand baths to try and help get rid of fleas as well but yeah we're pretty lucky with that that we don't have that problem so we don't need to treat them with any um, external parasite control like that so it's that little guy up there, look out. Yeah, he's currently the sentry. Um, you'll always see the, end, the sentries will be uh, at a higher area than the rest. So there's a better, uh, better view of everything than what the rest are. <laughs> Delano Mark asks, how long have these meerkat been at the ranch? All right, so Bam Bam is about eight years now, just under eight years. Um, Dusky is about three to four years, and then the others are just over two years that they've been with us. Uh, River and Willow, just over two years. They've been here, they've been their whole life with us, um, River and Willow. And like I said earlier, uh, Bam Bam and Dusk, they were pets, uh, so they were kept in homes, and then they joined us um, once they were a little bit older. And the people couldn't house them, and they realized that it would be better for them to be um, with animals of their own species in a group like this. Unfortunately, with guys like these, when they are raised by people, they can't be put back into the wild. Uh, they don't. They are so used to people. They are habituated to people. So it's better for them that 
that they will be um, brought to places like us where we can care for them and provide them with the needs um, that they have. Everything that they need, we can then give them. Wow. So, very playful this morning, enjoying the morning sun. It was pretty cold earlier, two degrees Celsius this morning, and they were not enjoying being outside. They were most of the time in their night houses, and when the sun was nice and bright out, they started coming out. So, pretty late sleepers as well, if it's cold in the mornings. Um, they only come out really once it warms up a little bit. Oh, they are beautiful. <laughs> Thank you everyone for tuning in. This was so much fun. We loved seeing you guys. Look at them huddling and cuddling. <laughs> They're pretty, pretty much a, a tight unit. Yeah, though. very close. Um, the social bond is very, very strong between these guys in the family. Um, so they're very, very tight family. And if anyone would like to help them, what could they do? Well, if anybody would like to help these guys, obviously we are more than happy for donations that would help to feed them continuously. Um, if you would like to find out what enrichment we do need for them as well, if you want to donate items, you can ask us as well what we could use for them and we can give you some ideas that you could donate as well. But um, monetary wise always helps when it comes to feeding these guys. Um, keeping all of our animals fed does cost a lot. And it's not just feeding, it's heating requirements that they've got as well. Inside the night houses, they've got heating as well for the night times when the temperature drops, does drop quite low. So yeah, there's a lot of things that goes into caring for these guys that people don't always realize. So um, you can adopt them as well. And that money that it costs to adopt these guys goes a long way in caring for them for their daily needs. <laughs> Some rough and tough playing going on there looks like every home yep. <laughs> thank you everyone for watching we hope you tune in on our next live feed so this is the first time we're going to be releasing this info we have more live feeds coming up on friday saturday and sunday please keep tabs on our social media pages this is going to be great we are going to show you a little bit more about the more scarier side of the animals that we have here uh, we love them to bits but we know that we need to educate a lot of people about them can anyone guess who we will be taking you to <laughs> the person who can guess the next live stream will win entrance to our facility as soon as we can open up our doors so please if you have an answer pop it to us on this thread we will have a look out and then we can send you your free tickets Thank you, everyone. We hope to have you back here soon. Have a beautiful youth day. And I hope you all lie in a little bit.